Hello everyone, I am Sir Abid Singh. I work at National Hospital and over the next 15 minutes we'll look at the iterative reconstruction techniques from CT, the potentials and limitations of the technique. These are my financial disclosures. Um, I'm assuming that everyone who's listening to this lecture is, is a little bit aware of the CT imaging chain, but let's go through this quickly in a minute. So what we have is we have scan parameters or the dose flux parameters as MA and KV, and then we have a scanner geometry over here with all sets of parameters which affects your image quality. And then finally we achieve a sinogram data or the raw data. And then we take this raw data and, and get CT images from here. So in this talk, I will basically just talk how, what kind of algorithm or techniques do we use to reconstruct CT images from the sinogram data. So let's start with the filtered back projection. This is the standard or the conventional technique available on the scanner. So what we're trying to do here is we'll try to scan this circular central focal bright spot and we'll send x-rays from the three different angles. We collect raw data in the detector domain and now we back project this raw data to the image domain. So what first we notice is that if you project it from three different projections, this circular spot is no longer a circle, but it's almost like a star. And even if I get different projections from different angles, I can still try to get the circular spot. The central part of the uh, circle looks bright, and the uh, periphery is a little bit blurred. And if we, this is a common star-shaped artifact seen all the way back to 1975. And if you plot them, uh, the CT values of these numbers, the central pixels will be brighter and the peripheral one will be less than that. So that's why we need some sort of filter to compensate for this effect and hence the name filtered back projection. This technique has served well for the past 40 years and now there's the introduction of this newer iterative reconstruction technique. So if you look at this flow chart, there's, we have sinogram domain, either we can take the algorithm towards filtered back projection or we use the iterative reconstruction technique which have better defined mathematical estimates and it does multiple iterations or loops of corrections to get the final image. And this is a classification of CT image reconstruction algorithm and this classification is also dating back to 1975 where we said either the reconstruction algorithm can be just a back projection or it can be an iterative method as in simultaneous iterative reconstruction technique or algebraic reconstruction technique or iterative least square technique. And also the analytical method, which is the filtered back projection, which we just looked at. This is the standard of the convention in all the scanners. So if you look at the history of CT and IR algorithms, dating back to 1970s with the first version of the EMI scanner actually had the IR algorithm on it. But since there was filtered back projection and there was less computational power in those times, filtered back projection took over and was as a norm in the CT reconstruction algorithm. However, with the in improvement in the computational power and as we kept on hitting the lower dose domain, we had a lower signal to noise ratio in CT, there was re-emergence of the IR algorithms and somewhere around 2009, all the vendors had different IR techniques. So in the next 10 or 12 minutes, I will basically go through these techniques from different vendors. So let's start with GE's ACER. So this algorithm assumes that filtered back projection takes the focal spot as infinitely small spot, it ignores the voxel size, and it assumes that the photon interaction is right in the geometric center. Whereas ACER algorithm takes into account the actual focal spot, which is one by one millimeter. It takes into account the image voxel size, which depends upon your field of view, your slice thickness, and then and it also, it, corrects for the inconsistencies that there is 80% of the detected area which is active. And the ACER algorithm also has a better noise model for photon quantums. So with these corrections, let's see how ACER behaves in the abdominal CT. So this patient was scanned at four different dose levels. In the top row, we have 200, 150, 100, and 50 MAS. With filtered back projection, we can see that the image noise goes up, although we can see this hemangioma here, the hepatic vessels tend to disappear in this noise. And when we process this raw data, with this data set with ACER, we see at, let's say at 100 MAS, that the image noise in the liver parenchyma has gone down, and we can still see the visibility of um, hepatic vessels. So it's a very important to pick the right dose level and the right IR technique. The ACER uh, techniques comes with a user interface where the user can slowly dial up the ACER level by 10% increment. For example, if they select 
uh, this level, which is FBP 100, there will be 0 percent ACER. If they select this level, this is FBP 50 percent versus ACER 50 percent. So let's see how this effect of ACER level uh, happens in the abdominal CT. So on the top row, once again, is filtered back projection at the same dose levels, 200, 150, 150 process with different ACE levels 30, 50 and 70. So let's compare 100 MAS. As we increase our level of ACE, the image noise goes down, which affects the visibility of hepatic vessels a little bit. So it's very important to pick the right dose level and the right level of ACE. Here's an example in the pediatric uh, region where we, this kid was scanned uh, for neuroblastoma. The prior scan was preoperative, which we have a large soft tissue mass over here which was scanned with filtered back projection, 160 MA and CTDF 10 milligray, whereas the post-op scan was done with ACER with 80 MA and the CTDI was 4 milligray, resulting in 60% dose reduction based on the CTDI. And another vendor, Siemens, have a technique which is called IRIS, as the name suggests, it's iterative reconstruction in image space, where they take the sinogram domain and do a master recon, and there's this loop of uh, noise correction in the image space to generate the final image. Here's an example of iris. So the top row is reconstructed with filtered back projection and we have 200 MAS, 100 MAS and 50 MAS. So first thing to note is that the image noise goes high in the liver, although we can still see this splenic lesion in the spleen. But when we process this with iris, so image noise goes down even at 50 MAS and we can still see the splenic lesion. Siemens also has another technique, which is Sapphire. This is the Sinogram Affirmed Iterative Reconstruction. This technique combines the raw data with the image-based loop, and they have a maximum likelihood model, which obtains a noise-free base information and an additive statistical noise, and solve this iteratively with multiple loops, and the number of iterative loops controls the strength of noise reduction. Here's an example of Sapphire. So this patient was scanned with 110 MAS and then follow up by 40 MAS. The raw data was processed with filtered back projection. First we can see the image noise has gone up and we process this raw data with different levels of sapphire as an S1, S2, S3, S4. So we notice that as you keep on increasing in the levels of sapphire, the image noise goes down in the liver. But if you also notice carefully that the, this hepatic lesion, there's a rim around it which actually smoothens or blurs out. So it's very important to pick the right level of sapphire as well as your dose. Here's another example in the chest CT. So first of all, it's very difficult to find differences in, in the chest because there's very less noise. But if you notice carefully, there's a lung fissure on the left lung major fissure, which disappears with different settings of sapphire. So it's very important to know the potential and the limitations of the technique. The potential is we do reduce noise, but the limitation is sometimes the small structures can get, uh, can disappear. And we have another technique which is image based IR. And this patient was scanned on the post-mortem setting with 200, 100 and 50 MAS. And when we process this raw data with the um, safe CT technique, we have see the image noise has gone down. But if you look at the pancreatic contour, it becomes a little bit smoothened or blurred out. Philips also has another technique uh, which is called the IDOS. IDOS basically goes to the raw data domain and it starts with the raw data domain and it takes the projection data and identifies and corrects the noisier CT measurements and these noisiest measurements could be either because of poor SNR or either low photon count as we keep on decreasing our dose, the photon gets depleted and this technique basically corrects the raw data and updates that projection data. And then finally it goes to the image space domain. So what does it do in the image space domain? It basically tries to preserve the edges with the help of this structure model or a multi-frequency model-based noise removal algorithm. And let's look at a few examples of IDOS. So on the top image is acquired at 250 MA, 120 kVp and reconstructed with 5 mm slice thickness. So first we see that on the left side we have filtered back projection, on the right side we have IDOS. We see that the image noise goes down and this IDOS was selected for IDOS setting 4. And this algorithm also comes with different settings all the way from 1 to 7. So it's very important once again to pick the right setting of IDOS. And in the bottom we have this patient scanned at 190 MA, 120 kVp, reconstructed with 5 mm slice thickness. As we see that the image noise goes down in the liver and even in the spleen you can see the image noise has gone down. 
Now let's look at another technique from Phillips which is the iterative model reconstruction or commonly known as IMR. And here this patient was scanned at 120 kV, 300 ma with a CTDI of 8 milligray and reconstructed with filtered back projection. Now the same raw data was reconstructed with different settings of IMR. So IMR comes with at least three different bins of settings. One is the low contrast which is on your left side. Then you have a combo and you have a sharp setting. And each of the settings has then different levels of noise reduction like L1, L2, L3. For the sake of simplicity, I've just taken L1 from each of this uh, bins. And let's look at this posterior part of the lung parenchyma where you have the streaks coming from the vertebral body. So if you see when you process with the low contrast settings, they're still there. With combo, they have almost disappeared. And with sharp setting, they are completely gone. So it's very important to select the right setting of the algorithm to get your desired effects in the image quality. And this is a technique from Toshiba, which is the adaptive iterative dose reduction. And this algorithm also goes from the projection data, takes some information of the scanner model, takes a statistical model into account, updates the raw data, and then it goes to the image space where it takes the anatomical model base optimization and has some blending tool to generate the final ADA images. Here's an example of ADA. On the, on the top we have on the left side is without ADA. And we can see the, there are so many streaks and noise in the pelvic region. And when we process with ADA 3D algorithm, your image noise goes down. And let's look at the liver parenchyma, which, which was scanned roughly around 2.5 millisieverts. We see that the image noise in the liver has gone down. Um, there's another algorithm called MBIR or VAO from GE which includes the system optic information and it includes the data statistics, it includes the desired image behavior information and all this information is taken to a cost function or a regularization terms to do multiple iterations and generate your final ACT images. So now let's look at how uh, MBIR behaves in the abdominal CT. So on your left side you have patient who was scanned at 200 MAS and on the right side you have images scanned at 50 MAS. The top row is reconstructed of the filtered back projection and the middle of the one is with ACER and the bottom one is with MBIR. So first thing to note at the low dose that is 50 MAS is that your image noise goes down. Although you can see ACER is reducing the image noise compared to the filtered back, MBIR completely flattens the noise. So it's almost minimum or no noise over here. And also if you look carefully, there's a very tiny low attenuation lesion in the, around the left lobe of liver which is not that hard to detect. So the point being that sometimes you can detect tiny lesions, but the image noise is so low that it could affect the visibility of the liver parenchyma or the texture of the parenchyma looks different, which we are not comfortable to look at. And here's an example of chest CT, where the top row shows the images at 150 MAS and reconstructed with filtered back projection, ACER and MBIR. And the bottom row is at 40 MAS, reconstructed with filtered back projection, ACER and MBIR. If you look carefully, there's a major lung fissure which tends to disappear with MBIR. So it does noise reduction, but it can cause smoothing of sinus structure. And we saw this in both the techniques from Veo from G and Sapphire from Siemens. And we did some uh, objective analysis. This is a noise power spectrum for the Veo technique. And if you look at this image on your left side, a filtered back projection and ACER, the noise texture is pretty much the similar. And with MBIR, you have very uniform or more regularized noise. And this is what a noise spectral uh, pattern also shows the same, that FPP and ACER has similar pattern, whereas MBIR or VAO further lowers the noise and had more regularized spectral signature. And this is our experience with different IR techniques at MGH how we optimize, first of all, we have on the G, we have ACER and VAO for different body regions. We pick up different MA levels and different noise indices and different IR settings. For chest, we have ACER 40. For abdomen, we have ACER 30. And for brain, we have ACER 90. So it's very important that we, whenever we try to use IR technique, we get the right dose level and the right settings of IR. And for Sapphire, we use S2 for chest, S3 for abdomen, and S3 for brain at these MAS levels. And for IDOS, we're using IDOS 2 for chest, IDOS 4 for abdomen, and IDOS 3 for brain. Thank you.